tonight's topic is called the value of the virtuous woman. That is the topic. The value of the virtuous woman. Okay. The value of the Israelite woman. Um, give me the book of Jeremiah 6 verse 2. Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 2. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2. Mm -hmm. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. Read that again. The book of Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. He says, I have likened the daughter of Zion to a calmly and delicate woman. The daughter of Zion is making reference to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. The daughter of Zion is making reference to the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Okay, give me second Ezra chapter 10 verse 44. Second Ezra chapter 10 verse 44. Second book of Ezra chapter 10 verses 44. This woman whom thou sowest is Zion. And whereas she said unto thee, even as she whom thou seest as a city builded. Read that again. Second book of Ezra chapter 10 verses 44. This woman whom thou sowest is Zion. So this woman, this woman that you see is Zion. The woman that you see is Zion. Come on. And whereas she said unto thee, even she whom thou seest as a city builded. As a city builded. So this woman transformed into a city because this is making reference to the 12 tribes of Israel. So those two, those two pieces that we went over is making, is making reference to all 12, likening the daughter of Zion, the, the 12 tribes of Israel to a comely and beautiful woman. Now, give me the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 3. Actually, you know what? Read Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 4. Isaiah 4 verse 4. The book of Isaiah chapter 4 verses 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. When the Lord shall have what? When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. The daughters of Zion is making reference to the women. Is making reference to the sisters now. Daughters, plural. Daughters of Zion is making reference to our sisters. Read that verse again. The book of Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4. Come on. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion. The filth is going into the disrespect. Okay. You understand the big mouth. You understand? The promiscuous dress code, hating of the men, you understand? Not wanting to take care of the children, not wanting to get married, hoarding themselves, you understand? That is what is going into when he says the filth of the daughters of Zion. Read on. And shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So now we're going to go into what? Into the cleansing of the daughters of Zion, bringing honor and value to understand the value of the, the Israelite woman, the daughters of Zion, to understand their value. Okay? Read that again, verse 4. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 4, verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So now we're going to deal with the, because the Lord is going to do that, okay? The Lord is already doing that by waking us up this day, by waking us up so that we can be able to go out there to teach our people, to set ourselves in order in the spirit of Christ and to teach our sisters so they can understand their importance and their role in the truth. You understand? In God's divine order. So now the sisters are going to lend their veil this day. And we're going to do part one. I'm going to do two series of that, of that class. Two series. Okay. The first, the, the first value that the Israelite woman had is that, because I went over the class similar to this one back in the day. So now there's a lot more stuff that I want to bring up. Okay. 
the first point is the first point that we're going to start with is the daughter, the Israelite woman, she understands the order of God. You understand? That is the first thing that the Israelite woman understands. That is the first virtue that a, the Israelite woman has. She understands the order of God. We're going to deal with that thing, okay? Give me that in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 1. You understand? We're going to go over the veil of the Israelite woman. The first one is the Israelite woman understands the order the most like God has set up. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Let's start there. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. Come on. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So the Apostle Paul is teaching us, he's, he's writing to the church of Corinth, but he's really taking, talking to the all 12 tribes in this day. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Because the Apostle Paul, he followed Christ. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. 1 Peter chapter, start of verse 21. 1 Peter 2, 21. First book of Peter chapter 2, verses 21. Come on. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So now Christ left us an example that we should walk after his footsteps. Okay, come on. He's going to explain what those footsteps are. Next verse. Who did no sin. Who did what? Who did no sin. Who did no sin. He didn't break no law. He kept the commandments that the, he, that, that the most like God gave unto him. And when he, up, uh, when, he up, when he observed those laws when he walked upon the earth, our forefathers that followed Christ, they followed after his footsteps. You understand? To observe the laws of God. Read. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither was guile, meaning bitterness, found in his mouth. Read. Who, when he was reviled, mm -hmm. reviled not again. He did not return evil for evil. Read on. When he suffered, he threatened not. When he suffered, on, when he suffered, when they put him on the cross, he didn't threaten back. Okay, come on. But committed himself to him that judges righteously. But he committed himself to him that judges righteously, meaning to the most like God. He committed to the Holy One, the most like God. Okay? So this is the example that the Christ left behind. That is the, the example that the Apostle Paul was following, that he was commanding us to follow after him because he followed after Christ. Go back to 1 Corinthians 11, verse 1 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now we understand what that means. Read on. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Because the Apostle Paul was teaching the churches. He was writing letters to the churches to make sure that they stay in the spirit. They follow after the ordinances that he delivered unto them. You understand? Read on. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Because their church in Corinth, they got the treatment. You understand? The woman was in charge. You understand? The woman was leading the men. That's why the Apostle Paul had to write this letter to the church in Corinth. There was a Jezebel spirit going on in the church. That's why he wrote this thing. Read that again, verse 3. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. Read. And the head of Christ is God. So now the Israelite woman, she's going to understand the order that the Lord has set up. This is God's order. You understand? That, that sister that understands, that, that righteous sister, that righteous sister will understand the order that the most High God has set up. That's the righteous sister right there. She understands that the head of every man, the Israelite man, is Jesus the Christ. And the head of the woman, meaning her head, is the man. And the head of Christ is God. She understands that. You understand? Because there is value in understanding the ordinances that the Lord has set up. Because once you understand them, you humble down and submit yourself to those ordinances, there's power in that thing. 
But but in society, our sisters have been taught that when you submit, it makes you look weak. That is not what God said. The reason why Adam and Eve, before they sinned, there was what we call today the power couple. Because Adam was in power, guess who was in power? The black woman. Eve was empowered when Adam was in power. That is one thing that the black women don't understand. But we're here to bring you to that understanding. So you can be elevated to the high level of thinking when it comes to this Bible. Read verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Now this is God's divine order. You understand? The, the Israelite woman, that righteous sister, she's going to understand this thing and she will humble down to this order right here because she understands the power in submission. You understand? Watch this. Now, you see when it says the head of the woman is the man, the, this righteous sister, she understands that without, without, her, without the man in her life, without a leader over her head, she knows that her, she's going to be forced. You understand? She is going to be forced. She understands that. That's that righteous sister. That is that virtuous woman. That virtuous woman, let me get the definition of that. Okay? The definition of virtuous. Hold on a second. Let me share my screen so we can understand this thing. Okay, read that. The definition of virtuous. The Read definition that. of the word virtuous, mm -hmm. an adjective, having or showing high moral standards. Read that again. The definition of the word virtuous, it's an adjective, having or showing high moral standards. You see that thing? Having or showing high moral standards. That's a virtuous woman, okay? That is a virtuous woman right there, the virtuous woman. Okay, now let's read the, the synonym. Read that. Righteous. Righteous. That's a biblical word. Righteous. Give me that in Deuteronomy 6 25. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. The virtuous woman, she's going to understand the order that the Lord has set up. And one of those, one of that order is she needs to have a head, or she needs to have a head over her head. You understand? Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Read that. The book, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. And it shall be our righteousness. Come on. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God as he had commanded us. So now, that righteousness, that, that's a virtuous woman. You understand? A virtuous woman is a righteous woman. She understands the order of God, the value of the virtuous woman. Read that, go back to the definition on, 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 the, on the screen. Read the definition again. The definition of the word virtuous, mm -hmm. adjective, having or showing high moral standards. Having or showing high moral standards. Meaning this sister, guess what? She's got a very high moral standard. What are those moral standards? Righteousness, the laws of God. She will defend, she will stand up for them, she will submit and humble herself to the laws of God because she understands there's power in that thing. That's the mind state of a virtuous woman. You understand? Read the synonyms. Righteous. Mm. Good. Moral. Uh -huh. Morally correct. Morally correct. Come on. Ethical. Ethical. She understands the ethical how, what, is it, what, is, what it means to be righteous? Because that's what it means to be ethical. Righteous. Upright. Read the next one. Upright. 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 Give me that in Psalm chapter 15. Psalm 15, verse 3, real quick. Psalm chapter 15. Psalm 15. The book of Psalms. Two. Psalm 15, verse 2. Okay, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 15, verse 2. Mm -hmm. He that walketh uprightly. He that walketh uprightly, come on. And walketh righteousness. So if you walk up if you walk uprightly, you are working righteousness. Come on. And speaketh the truth in his heart. You see that thing? High moral standard. You understand? You're gonna speak the truth in your mind. 
that is the value of the right of the virtuous woman. The value of the virtuous woman, she will walk uprightly and she worketh righteousness and she speaks the truth in her mind, the laws of God. Okay? Read that synonym now. Next, next synonym. Upstanding. Upstanding. Okay, come on. High-minded. Right-minded. Right-minded. Uh-huh. Come on. Right thinking. Right thinking. Meaning what? You think you think uprightly. You understand? According to the law. That is the mindset of the virtuous woman. Read. Principled. What did it say? Principled. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 4. Give me Proverbs chapter 4. Give me Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Come on. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Come on. So for you to have principles, that means you have wisdom. Read. Therefore, get wisdom. Therefore, get wisdom. Read on. And with all thy getting, get understanding. And with all thy getting of this wisdom, you're going to get understanding. You understand? You are principled. You've got wisdom. Go back to the, to, the, to the definition. Read that part again. Principled. Exemplary. Exemplary. Mm -hmm. Keen. Mm. Law abiding. Law abiding. Upright. Virtuous. Read. Lawful. Lawful. Uh -huh. Irreproachable. Irreproachable meaning what? You cannot find anything to, to say against that sister. Why? Because the sister has got a good report. The sister has got good works in Israel. The sister is not a gossiper. The sister, she's not, she's, she's not only, she's, you're not going to find, when her name comes up, you're not going to find that, no, the sister had a fight with that sister. She had a disagreement with that sister. She had an exchange with sister so and so. You're not going to find her in the midst of that evilness. Okay, come on. Blameless. 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 Read that part. Reputable. Reputable. She's got a good report. You understand? Read that. Respectable. 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 Hmm. Okay. Go back to where was that now? Go back to um. Go back to First Corinthians. Um. First Corinthians. First book. Verse three. Mm -hmm. The first book of Corinthians chapter eleven verse three. Read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Read. And the head. And the head of the woman is the man. Mm -hmm. And the head of Christ is God. You see that thing? So the virtuous woman understands that the head of every man is Jesus Christ. She understands where the power comes from. The power is from top down. Okay? The most high, Christ, the man. Then the woman, then the children. She understands the power structure. You understand? And she, ha she understands it and she respects it. She does not suck her teeth when order is being set up. She doesn't do that because she's a, she's a right-minded sister. She's, a, she's upright. She thinks righteously. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. I want this verse to sink in. First book of Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Mm -hmm. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of the woman is the man. And the woman. And the head of the woman is the man. And the hair of the woman is the man. The hair of the woman is the man. The hair of the woman is the Israelite man. You understand? The virtuous, the virtuous woman or the virtuous sister, she understands this thing. And she respects it. She honors it. She's glad of it even. Because this is what this sister understands. Give me the book of Sirach 3625. Ecclesiastical. Chapter 36, verse 25. The book of Ecclesiastes is 36, verse 25. Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. So this virtuous sister, this virtuous woman, she understands that if there's no hedge around her head, guess what? 
she knows that she's going to be spoiled as a possession. She understands that. So guess what she, she, she does? She makes sure that she pattern her life according to what this Bible says. So that the most High God will appoint over her head that righteous man, that God-fearing man. You understand? The man that is known, that has got a good reputation, has got a good name, that honors and fears the most High God of heaven and earth. You understand? Read that again, verse 25. Read that thing. The book of Ecclesiastes, 36, verse 25. Mm -hmm. Where no hedge is, they, the position is spoiled. So now, this virtuous woman understands this thing. It says there the possession is spoiled. Now, let's get the definition of the word possession. Okay? Before we get the definition of possession, let's get the definition of hedge. Hedge. Okay? Where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Okay. Read that. Um, let me see. I want the, the, this is the definition I want. Read this one. Read definition one of the verb. Read that. Definition of the word hedge. Verb. Surround with a hedge. Surround with a hedge. Okay. Watch this. Um, read that. Border. 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 Okay. Read that. Edge. 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 Read that. Bound. Okay. Now, read this one. The definition of the word hedge verb. Protect oneself against loss. It, it says what? On protect oneself against loss. It says protect oneself against loss. To protect oneself against loss. Because the virtuous woman, she understands that if there is no hedge over her head, as a position, she's going to what? She's going to be, she's going to become spoiled. She's going to be left to the spoil. She understands that. Read that again. The definition of the word hedge. Protect oneself against loss. Read on. On a bet or investment. Read that part again. On a, a bet or what? On a bet or uh -huh. investment. A bet or investment. Investment. Because if you're investing, if you have an investment, that means you have an asset. Okay? So if you don't have a hedge over your head as a sister, guess what? You're not going to become an investment. That means you're not an asset. You are a liability if you don't have a hedge over your head. You understand? Because your mind, that's what we read in Isaiah 4 and 4, when it says, when the Lord shall have washed the filthiness of the daughters of Zion. Because for you, when you have a hedge over your head, guess what? That filthiness is not going to be there. Because the hedge will protect you from catching the filthiness. You understand? Read that again. The definition of the word hedge. Verb. Protect oneself against loss on a bit or investment. Read on. By making balancing or compensating transactions. Okay, watch this. Now, let's get the definition of safeguard. Okay? Read that. Safeguard, the definition of the word safeguard, uh -huh. a noun, a measure taken to protect someone or something or to prevent something undesirable. Read that definition again. The definition of the word safeguard. Come on. Noun. A measure taken. A what? Is that a what? A, a measure a taken. A measure. A measure. Meaning you go to great lengths, you understand, to protect someone. So the most that God went to great measures, great lengths, to protect the black woman. So how did, how did the Lord do it? The most High God set up Adam, the black man, over him to make sure that she what she's protected from something happening that is going to be undesirable. Meaning what to protect the woman from becoming the fear that the nations now the, the, the nations now look at our sister. You understand? Because they are the twig queens now. Okay, they twerk. They don't know how to cook. 
disrespectful. They've got a big black mouth, okay? All of that. They, they, they walk naked on the street because that's where the world has defined our system because the head is not there. You understand that? But the virtuous woman, she won't understand. I'm a position. I'm an investment. Once my, the, this investment is not protected, guess what happens to the investment? It becomes a liability. It becomes a loss. It becomes undesirable. You understand? People are going to bet against it because it's inevitable that it's going to fall. Read that part again. Read the definition again. The definition of the word safeguard. Noun. A measure taken to protect someone or something or to prevent something undesirable. Or to prevent something undesirable. To prevent something undesirable. So well, guess what? That measure that the Lord has set up is the man, the black man. You understand? The Israelite man that keeps God's commandments. That is your that is your shield of protection because you are a possession. You are an asset. You understand? Psalm 36, verse 25. Read that thing. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 36, verse 25. Read. When no hedge is, they, the possessions, is spoiled. He says, when no hedge is, when there's no protection, you understand? When there's no shield or defense or shelter or protection, guess what? The possession will be spoiled. The women are going to be spoiled. That's what you see our sisters today. They are spoiled because they hate and reject the protection of the black man. You understand? They want to be on top. They want to be equal or above the black man. Guess what? That's why you see the, the way the black woman is today. She's undesirable. Why? Because she rejects the hedge. She rejects the order that the Lord has set up. But the virtuous woman won't think like that. A virtuous woman thinks quite the opposite. She understands and respects the order that the Lord has set up because she trusts in the most high. You understand? Jump up to verse 24. Watch this. There are 36 verse 24. Read that. He that getteth a wife beginneth a position. He that getteth a wife does what? Beginneth a position. Okay, read verse 24 again. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 36 verse 24. Mm -hmm. He that gets at the wife beginneth a position. Read. A help like unto himself and a pillar of rest. Now watch this thing. Let's get the definition of the word possession. Okay? The definition of the word possession. Right. Read that. The definition of the word possession. Mm hmm Something that is owned or possessed. Something that is owned or possessed. Let's read the, 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 the synonyms now. Read that. Asset. Stop right there. Read that part again. Asset. Hmm. Asset. So, sister, you need to understand this thing. You, you are that investment. But for you to become an investment, we need to see the value in the investment. What is that value? The laws of God is where the value comes from. Submission, that's where the value comes from. Because once you submit, guess what? The, the, most, the, the man submits to Christ. You submit to your Lord. When you do that, you become an asset. When we submit to the most High God, we become an asset in the sight of the Father. Likewise, the sisters, you need to submit to the black man because that's the order that the most High God has set up. Then you become an asset. You understand? Let's get the definition of asset now. Hmm, read that thing. The definition of the word asset, noun, a useful or valuable thing or person. You see that thing? You see what an asset is? It's something that is it's something that is of value. Where do you get the value from? The value of a virtuous woman is understanding the order of God. That's the first value that the, uh, that the virtuous woman has. A virtuous woman, the first value she has, she understands the order of God. And she what? She humbles down to that order that the Most High God has set up. That is the, what, that's the first value of a virtuous woman. You understand? Watch this. Read the synonyms. Benefit. Mm. 
advantage. Advantage. So when you don't have, when you have a Jezebel woman on you by your side, you, you have a disadvantage. You understand? Read. Blessing. Woo! That's some heavy stuff right there. Read the part again. Blessing. 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 Hmm. Blessing. Give me the rat, chapter 26. It is just because chapter 26 and verse. It is just because 26, verse 13. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 26, verse 13. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, mm. and her discretion will fatten his bones. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Why? Because this woman, she's not without discretion. She understands that her value is making sure that she becomes that asset to her husband. You understand? And the way she becomes an asset, guess what? It says the grace of a wife delighted her husband. Discretion is one of those qualities that a virtuous sister must have. You understand? Read on, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is the gift of the Lord. You see that thing? A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. That means a loud, a loud mouth, you understand? A loud mouth and hateful woman is a gift of Satan. You understand? You don't want that. Read. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. As a mind well instructed. Remember what we, what, what we, what we went over. Uprightness. A virtuous woman, she's right-minded. You understand? She's got a good head on her shoulder. Because her value is what? The laws of God. She understands the power of the order that the Lord has set up. She understands that thing. She's an asset to her husband. She's not a liability. So sisters, you need to make sure that you are an asset to your husband, not a liability. Because if you are a liability, guess what you're going to be? Guess what type of woman you're going to be? Give me Proverbs 14 verse 1. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 1. Read. Every wise woman buildeth the house, mm -hmm. but the foolish pluck it down with her hands. But the foolish woman, she will pluck the house down with her hands. She's not going to be an asset to her husband. She's going to be a liability. You understand? For instance, the husband is working. Let's say both of you are working, okay? Let's say both of you are working. As both of you are working, you just want to be shopping. You don't want to save money. You always want to go to the shops and be buying stuff. Even things you don't need. You just, every single time the money is in your hand, it's itching you. You just want to go out and be buying stuff. You are a liability. You are not an asset. Okay? Here you are, you're supposed to raise up the children, to teach the children. Guess what? The children have been raised up by television. You are a liability. You are not an asset. You understand? You always argue with your husband about every little thing. You are, on, you, are not a, you are not an asset. You are a liability. You understand? You can't keep your mouth shut. When something goes wrong, when you do something wrong, when you are checked, guess what? Instead of saying, I acknowledge, I have done wrong. I'm sorry, let me fix it. No, no, no. She's going to what? She's going to make sure that she runs her mouth so that everybody forgets what happened. You now start, you actually forget. What, just, why are we going back and forth? It's because... That is not the, the that is not a virtuous woman. That's a Jezebel woman. That's a liability. That's not an asset. You understand? Because when you argue, when you don't submit, when you don't follow command, when you don't do things according to how your Lord is instructing you, you are not a, you are not an asset. You are a liability. You understand? But the virtuous woman, she's gonna think. You know what? What can I do to make sure that as my Lord is building? My job is to make sure that I what I look after that which is built. I must make sure that my behavior and my conduct, the way I speak, the way I am, how I dress, how I conduct myself, how I how I how I deal with others, must be a reflection of my law. You are an asset because when you go out there, guess what? You you are the face of your husband. You represent him. So everything that you do that is off, is that goes against this 
Bible, guess what? It's a testament against him. So are you honoring your husband? No. You're disrespecting your husband. Guess what? You're not an asset. You are a liability. You understand? All right. Now, go back to Zerah 36, verse 25. Now. Read verse 25 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 36, verse 25. Where no hedge is, they the position is spoiled. Where no hedge is, there the position is spoiled. When there's no leader, when there's no shield of protection, which is who? The man over the sister. Whether the sister is married or not, there must always be a leader, leadership, a leadership set up over the sister. At any given point in time, there must always be a man of understanding over the sister. Understand that? To make sure that they are actually, they become, they prepare themselves to become that asset that their Lord will be looking for, that the most High God is looking for. You understand? All the time. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 5, verse 5. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 5. We're still, we're still we're dealing with point number one. The virtuous woman understands the order of God. Read that. Isaiah 5, verse 5. The book of Isaiah, so to five verse five. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Mm -hmm. I will take away the hedge thereof. I will do what? And I will take away the hedge thereof. He says, I will, I will take away the hedge thereof. I'm going to take away the shield of protection. You understand? The man is that shield of protection. So the Lord is saying, I'm going to take away the hedge thereof. Read. I will take away the hedge off and it shall be eaten up. Come on. And and break down the wall thereof and it shall be trodden down. You see that thing? You see what happens when the hedge is taken away? Because now he's comparing the nation of Israel to a vineyard, a garden. You understand? He says, I'm going to take away the protection of this garden so that it be trodden down. It be broken down. You understand? So that's what he's saying right here. So the virtuous woman understands that if I don't have a hedge over my head, guess what happens? Read verse 5 again. Isaiah 5 and 5. The book of Isaiah chapter 5 verse 5. Come on. Now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, mm -hmm. and it shall be eaten up and broken down and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. You see that thing? Because the hedge is the wall of protection. It's the wall of defense. You understand? Once the hedge is taken away, the walls, are, the walls come down and it's going to be eaten up and it's going to be trodden down. Because why? If that's why it says, where no hedge is, there the possession is spoiled. Then that possession will no longer be an asset. It's going to be a liability. Because anybody is not secure. The security is gone. You understand? That's why there's not... That's where the scripture says there's nothing much worse than a mind that is well that is well instructed. So the, one of the values of a virtuous woman is that her mind is well instructed. Because how is it well? Why is it well instructed? Because when the instruction comes, the sister does not back up. The sister does not become defensive. The sister does not make excuses. The sister actually keeps quiet. Look at the problem that she's going, the the the, problem, the wrong that she's doing, and she fixes it. That there's power in that thing. You understand? When you acknowledge your wrongs and fix them, you become an asset, not a liability. You understand? Give me the book of Psalms 89, verse 40. Psalms chapter 89, verse 40. The book of Psalms, chapter 89, verses 40. Come on. That was broken down all his hedges. That was brought his strongholds to ruin. You see that thing? That was brought his stronghold to ruin. Meaning now everyone can just come in and sack that city and destroy it. You understand? Read that again, verse 40. The book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 40. That was broken down all his hedges and has brought his strongholds to ruin. It says, thou, not end. It says, thou has brought his strongholds to ruin. Because the hedge is a stronghold. Is a strong wall of defense, protection, so that what is protected becomes an asset 
or continues to become an asset, not a liability. Because once the walls are broken down, guess what? Everyone will be able to take the spoil. So no longer is it a, an asset, now it's a liability. You understand? The position has been spoiled. Next verse, verse 41. Here's what happens when there's no hedge of protection around the system. You understand? Really? All that pass by the way spoil him. You see that thing? He, all that, hold on, it says, all that pass by the way spoil him. All that pass by the way spoil him because the hedge of protection is not there. Just look at our sisters this day. You understand? Our sisters today, the way, the, the way that they've been conditioned, they've been conditioned to look at the black man as their enemy. When they see the black man, they see an enemy. They don't see that hedge of protection. They don't see that God. They don't see that, that honorable man. You understand? They don't, see, they don't see the king. They don't see the king of kings in them. You don't, they don't see Christ in the black man. They see a nigger. They see a dog. They see all manner of evil things they can, all, all manner of names they will come up with to call the black man. You understand? Because the hedge of protection has been taken from them. The mind has been spoiled and corrupted. Now when they look at the black man, they don't see an asset no more. They see a liability. More importantly, they see an enemy. So when the black man, the most that God is raising up the black man, guess what happens? Now the black woman, she hates the fact that the black man is addressing the issues that exist in the nation of Israel. That include the women, their conduct, their speech, how they treat their children, how they treat their husband, their fathers, and their brothers. You understand? Read that again, verse 41. The book of Psalms, chapter 89, verse 41. All that pass by, all that pass by the way, spoil him. He is a reproach to his neighbors. You see that thing? You become a reproach to your neighbor. Because today, when, the, when, when we look at the black woman, my God, the position is completely spoiled. The filthiness has not been washed away. That's, what we're, that's why the Lord is raising us up to do that thing, to wash away the filth. You understand? The disrespect, the evil speech, the hatred, the bitterness. Because the black women, very, very bitter. You understand? Our job is to take away that poison from them, to take out the poison with the word of God. That's our job. You understand? The virtuous woman will understand that thing. She will understand all these decades, all these thousands of years, I have been without the black man. So what does that mean? What is my the level of what what is the level of, of corruption that is in my mind? Because you have to think about that thing, black man. You brothers need to think about that. Sisters too. You need to think about like the level of corruptness, corruption that is in your mind. Because of what? Because you've been taught to hate the black man. The, the hedge of protection that the Lord has put over you. So you have to understand the level of the level of spoil that exists in your spirit. I'm not saying the black man is like exempt from this, but that's not tonight's topic. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 80 verse 12. Psalm chapter 80 and verse 12. The book of Psalms. Chapter 80, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Why hast thou then broken down her hedges, so that all they which pass by the way do pluck her? You see that thing? All those that pass by, they pluck her. They destroy the black woman. Because look at our sisters today. They bleach their skin. They blonde their hair. They wear weaves. They wear bum shorts. They show their cleavage. And I mean from the youngest to the oldest. And when I say youngest, I'm not talking about 15 year old. Oh no. From the five year old, from the six year old, you see that. You understand? Because the, the mothers are teaching their children that just like this is okay. By the time the child is 12, 15 years old, she's already pregnant. She knows men. She knows how to deal with the men. You understand? That's the level of spoil that exists in the black woman. Now, our job is to bring forth to bring forth the scriptures to clean her up. That's our job. You understand? That is our job. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. Proverbs 8, verse 4. Proverbs 8, verse 4. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. Mm -hmm. And to you, O men, 
I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 4. And to mm -hmm. you, all men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. You see what you see what the Bible is saying? It says, unto you, all men, I call. My voice is to the sons of men. Because the virtuous woman understands that the black man is called first. The black man comes first. You understand? She understands that the men are the leaders. She understands that the most that God gives to the men first. That's why it says, I'm calling the men first. Then foremost. The virtuous woman understands that. Why is the man being called first? Because she understands the order that we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. That is the most that God, Christ, the man and the woman. So when the scripture says, unto you, O men, I call. Guess what? She understands why. She's not going to question it. Why is the man, why is God dealing with you? Why is he not dealing with us? She's not going to have the spirit of Miriam in Numbers 12. She's not going to have the spirit because she understands the divine order that the Lord of heaven and earth has set up. Give me that in Genesis 127. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. Let's go to the beginning. Okay? The virtuous woman understands this order right here. Watch this. Genesis 1, verse 27. The book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. Male and female created he, them. So at this point, the he, him is talking about Adam. You understand? So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he, him. So God created Adam here. You understand? The first man. Because... In Proverbs chapter 8, King Solomon was letting us know, listen, the man comes first. The men are the leaders of the nation. You understand? Society understands that, but when it comes to us, they want the black man, the black woman to be in the front. Because they understand that if the black man gets his mind right, the whole earth is going to bow down. They don't want that. Guess what? The black woman don't want that either. Because she's been taught that submission is weakness. But when you look at the white man, the black, the white woman sub, sub, supports the white man 100%. You know why? Because she understands that the, the man is in power. And because she's in, he's in power, I'm in power. So now the throne, they are, in, they, they are heirs together to the throne. Because the white woman is behind the, the white man. The Chinese woman is behind the Chinese man. The, the, the Arab woman, she's behind the Arab men, so on and so forth. But when it comes to us, all of a sudden, the black woman is supposed to be on top. That's how we're supposed to run society. Letting you know this whole thing is a scam. You understand? So this class is designed to bring the black woman to a higher level of thinking, spiritual understanding. Genesis 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm-hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Come on. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So when Adam was created, Adam was given wisdom. Adam was given wisdom, power, and wealth. You understand? Adam was given wisdom, power, and wealth. Understand that beyond belief and eternal life. Read that again, verse 7. Okay. The book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. So now, I have a picture here so you can see. Um, one sec. Let me see, let me see. So I want you to read that, read, read that verse again. One second. Read that verse again. So brothers and sisters, I hope you can see the image. I hope you can see the picture. Read verse, two, verse 7 again. The book of Genesis, chapter two, verse seven. Really? And the Lord, and the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. You see that thing? That that what you see here? That this is what you're looking at. That's Adam right there. You understand? That's an artist impression. When the Most High God formed man, He formed Adam from the dust of the ground. Look at that thing. That's Adam right there. The first man. That the Most High God Himself, He fashioned from the dust of the ground. He was not a clone. You understand? Read that again, verse seven. 
the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And man became a living soul. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 7 verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon, I went over this before, so it's, up, it's, it's not nothing new for you. Okay? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 24. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 7 verse 24. Come on. For wisdom is more moving than any motion. Mm -hmm. She passes and goes through all things by reason of her pureness. Come on. For she is the breath of the power of God. For wisdom is the breath of the power of God. So Adam was given wisdom and power because wisdom is power. You understand? Adam was given power. That is one thing that the virtuous woman understands. The virtuous woman understand where her power comes from. She understands her, that her power comes from the power that the Lord gave to the what? To the black man. She understands that thing. So that when she looked at the black man that understand who he is, when she looked at the black man that keeps to the commandments of the Most High God, guess what? She's going to look at the black man with respect, honor, and reverence. And deep respect for the black man. Why? Because the black woman, the virtuous woman, she understands the power that the Lord put in this man. She understands that thing. That's the virtuous woman right there. Read that again, verse 25. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 7, verse 25. For, for she is the breath of the power of God. She is the breath of the power. The power of God. So Adam was given power. That's the wisdom he was given. Adam had power. All the power that the Most High God was able to put together, he gave it to Adam. And we come from that lineage of Adam. We are the sons of God. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 10 verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 10 verse 1. Mm -hmm. She preserved the first formed father of the world. That's wisdom. Read. Really? That was created alone. That was what? Created alone. Adam was created alone. He was the first man that was created. Read. And brought him out of his fold. That's something, a topic, a different topic altogether. Read on. That's true. And gave him power to rule all things. Read verse 2 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 2. And gave him power to rule all all things. The most that God gave Adam power to rule all things. All things, everything and everyone. Adam was given this power. And all those that come from Adam's loin, guess what? They had power and dominion among, on earth. Understand that? You understand? So the virtuous woman understands where her power comes from. When the black man is in power, guess what happens to the black woman? She is empowered also. She is fully empowered. You become that power couple. You understand? Why? Because you understand where that power you have, the power, the, the empowerment that you have, you understand where it comes from. It comes from the divine order that the Lord has set up. And the most High God has put that power in the black man. And that power, you get to share that power with him. You understand? And how do you share it? You submit yourself to this black man. That's how you that's how you become heir to the to the what to the throne. You become heir to you become heirs together to the throne, to the promise that was given to our forefather Abraham. Let me put it that way. Okay? Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 4. 2nd Ezra, chapter 3, verse 4. Second book of Ezra, chapter 3, verses 4. O Lord, who bearest the rule. Thou spakest at the beginning when thou did plant the earth and that thyself alone and commandest the people. Read. And gavest the body unto Adam without soul, which was the workmanship of thine hands, and did breathe into him the breath of life, and he was made living before thee. You see that thing? So Adam was given the breath of life, and he was made living before the Lord. He became a living soul, like you see here the picture. Read on, verse 6. 
and thou leadest them into paradise, which thy right hand had planted before ever the earth came forward. You see that thing? It says, he, he gave, the most that God gave power to Adam. After he gave him power, he gave him what? He gave him, to, he gave him power and dominion over everything and everyone that the Lord made. You understand? So Adam had wisdom, he had power, he had possession. You understand? Adam had wealth. Unimaginable wealth. You understand? Adam had that thing. Okay? He was all powerful and all God. That's how Adam was. And that's how we are. Right now it doesn't look like that because, listen, with the defrayed bodies we got, you understand? But what, you, what, I wanna, what, what, what I want you sisters to see is the power that you had when you were under the black man. Unimaginable power you had access to. That's why you notice that the women of the other nations, they are 100% behind their husband. You know why? Because they understand where their power is. They understand that. It's only our sisters who don't get that thing. But today is your day if you can understand how important your black man is. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. I want to show you how it was in the garden. Okay? Job, chapter 11, and verse 6. Watch this. The book of Job, chapter 11, verses 3. Verse 6, verse 6. Job 11, verse 6. The book of Job, chapter 11, verses 6. The book of Job, chapter 11, verse 6. Come on. And that he would show thee the secrets of wisdom. The Lord will show us the, the secret. The Lord, the Lord will show us the secrets of wisdom. Read on. That they are double to that which is. You see that thing? That the secrets of wisdom are double to that which is written. The scriptures have more than one meaning. That's what it's saying. Watch this. Give me the book of Ezekiel 31 verse 1. Let me show you what was going on in the garden in the beginning. Okay? Because Adam was given power and dominion and wealth. Power over everything. Every bit of God's creation, Adam had power and rule over. You understand? That includes the sea, the oceans, the mountains, and so forth. He commanded them. Watch this. Ezekiel 31 verse 1. Read that thing. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 31, verses 1. And it came to pass in the 11th year, in the third month, in the first day of the month, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Read. Son of man, speak unto Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and to his multitude, whom art thou, whom art thou like in thy greatness. You see that thing? It says, who, it says, who art thou like in thy greatness? Who are you like in thy greatness? Read on. Watch this. Behold, the Assyrian was a sitar in Lebanon the with fair branches. It says, behold, the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon with fair branches. Now, this is a, this is a parable here. Okay, the dark thing. Read on. And with a shadowing shroud. Mm -hmm. And of a high stature. And his top was among the thick poles. And his top, meaning what? This is that the Assyrian was a cedar in Lebanon. With fair branches, meaning beautiful branches. A cedar is a tree, okay? With a shadowing shroud and of a high stature. And his top was among the thick boughs. He's describing the cedar tree now, see? The waters made him great. Mm -hmm. The deep set him up on high with the rivers running, with the rivers running round about his plants. And sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. You see that thing? So this is a parable here. This tree is not talking about the actual tree. Uh, read on. We're going to explain this four. Keep reading. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field. So the height of this tree, the height of this cedar tree, is that the waters made him great. They did set him on high with the, with the rivers running round about his plant and sent out her little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Read on. Read verse 5 again. 
book of Ezekiel 31 verse 5. Therefore, his height was exalted above all the trees of the field, mm -hmm. and his bows were multiplied. Come on. And, and his branches became long because of the multitude of waters when he shot forth. You see that thing? It's, so this tree was, it, says it was exalted above all the trees of the field. You understand? Verse 6 now, come on. All the fowls of heaven made their nests in his bow. Read. And under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth the young. And under his shadow dwelt all great nations. And under the shadow of this great cedar tree, he says, dwelt all great nations. Read on. Thus was he fair in his greatness. He was beautiful in his greatness. Read on. In the length of his branches, for his root was by great waters. So the root of this tree was by great waters. Read on. The cedar in the garden of God could not hide him. The what? The cedars in the garden of God could not hide him. He says the cedars in the garden of God could not hide this tree. Read. The fir trees were not like his bows. And the chestnut trees were not like his branches. No, any tree in the garden of God was like unto him in his beauty. You see that thing? He says he was not compared to anything, any tree in the garden of God. Read on. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches. So that all the trees of, of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. What did they do? Envied him. He says, all the trees in the garden of God, they envied this tree. So who's this talking about? This talking about Adam. The trees, read verse 4 now, Ezekiel 31 verse 4. The book of Ezekiel 31 verse 4. The waters made him great. The deep set him up on high with the rivers running round about his plants and sent out a little rivers unto all the trees of the field. Unto all the trees of the field. Jump down to verse 9 now. Come on. I have made him fair by the multitude of his branches, so that all the trees of Eden that were in the garden of God envied him. So now it says, because trees don't envy. Trees don't envy. So letting you know, it's not talking about actual trees here. Give me that in Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8. Mark 8, verse 24. The book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 24. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. He says, I see men as trees walking. What is he talking about? He's making, if this is a similitude to what we are reading, what we just read in the book of Ezekiel 31. So Ezekiel 31, that great cedar tree is making reference to Adam. All the trees in the garden is making reference to all the nations that the Lord created. They all envied Adam because Adam was given all power, you understand, to rule everything and everyone. You understand? Adam was given wisdom, power, wealth, and dominion. Understand that thing? So what I want to show you, sisters, is the power that was bestowed upon the black man. You understand? Some heavy stuff. Because all that it says, not some, all the trees of the garden of the field envied him. What do you think? Why do you think the black man is always put down wherever he goes? Because the nations know the power that the black man has. The nations know the power that was bestowed upon the black man. That's why they always do anything and everything to make sure that the black man is always in confusion. Once the black man is confused, the black woman is destroyed, it's gone. The position gets spoiled. And that's what we have now. We're restoring that honor back. We're getting that flavor back. You understand? Give me the book of Psalms 82 verse 6. Psalms 82 verse 6. I'm still dealing with the first point of the value of the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman understands what we're going over. She understands that thing. So sisters, I need you to, to repent I need you to be born again to understand what is written. What we're going over is some heavy stuff. Psalm 82 verse 6. Read that. The book of Psalms 82 verse 6. Come on. I have said, ye are gods. Read. And, and all of you are children of the Most High. Okay, Psalm 82 verse 6. Read that. Psalms 82 verse 6. 
I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. You see that thing? It says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. The, mo the Most High God says, we are gods on this earth. Starting from Adam, where everybody that the Lord created ended Adam. You understand? Read that again, verse 6. Psalms chapter 82, verse 6. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are the children, are children of the Most High. And all of you are children of the Most High God. Watch this. Give me that in John chapter 10, verse 34. Because Christ spoke about this thing. John 10, verse 34. Read that thing. John chapter 10, verse 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. He says, Is it not written in your law that I have said, Ye are gods? It's written in the law because we just read it in Psalm 32, verse 6. We are gods on the earth. You understand? Read on. Watch this, verse 35. If he, if he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. And the scripture cannot be broken. The scripture cannot be broken regarding what? Our state on this earth. We are the gods of the earth. That's not going to change. You understand? That's why it says all the trees in the garden envied him. Why? Because the scripture cannot be broken. We are gods of the earth. We have been given power and dominion over every bit of God's creation. It doesn't seem like that right now. But that time is coming. We're building up to it. You understand? Give me Genesis 2 verse 18. Now, the virtuous woman understands the order that the Lord has set up. And she understands the power of submission. Submitting to the power that the Lord has set up, which is who? Adam, the black man. Genesis 2 verse 18. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Uh -huh. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. Mm -hmm. I will make and help meet for him. Jump down to verse 20. Genesis chapter 2 verse 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So, but for Adam, there was not found a help meet for him. Meaning what? A possession. A pillar of rest. She wasn't created yet. Because guess what? Adam was created and all the nations were created also. Guess what? Eve wasn't made yet. Because the most High God looked at all the creations that he made, all the nations that he made, looked at all the women he made. He realized that, listen, there's not a woman that would be, able, would be a match for Adam, that would be suitable. I cannot see any woman that is good enough for Adam. Guess what? I'm going to fashion the woman out of Adam's bed. That's the black woman. Verse 21. Read that. Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. Mm -hmm. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. So now he put a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, you understand? And he took one of Adam's ribs, read on, verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. You see that thing? That is the beginning of submission right there. After the Lord created Eve, Eve was taken and what? He was brought, she was brought to Adam. Submission. You understand? Because Eve was not going to be by herself. Eve needed to be under a power that was set up on earth. And everybody envied that power. Eve was well enough to be fashioned out of Adam to be given to this power that was created. Which is who? The black man. Read. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Watch this. Now, I have another picture that I want to show. Okay. So I can show you brothers and sisters. All right. Just bear with me. Let me share this image right here. Read verse 22. Read verse 22 again. Look at that thing. That's a beautiful picture right there. Read verse 22 again. Genesis chapter 2 verse 22. Uh -huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken 
from men, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. You see that thing? So Eve was taken from Adam. Because guess what? That power that Adam was given, the same power was used to fashion Eve out of him. Next verse, verse 23 now. Come on. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones mm -hmm. and flesh of my flesh. Come on. She shall be called woman mm. because she was taken out of man. That's what you see right there. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. She was taken out of Adam. Look at that thing. That's a beautiful picture right there. Now, next verse. Come on. Verse 24. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Read. And they shall be one flesh. And they shall be one flesh. That's when they became that power couple. That's when they became that power on the earth. As a team, working together, even understanding where her power comes from. You understand? It, she was taken out of Adam. So the same power that was the same the power that was given to Adam, guess what? Eve was created out of that power. So in order for you to make sure that you function correctly, you are in your right state of mind, guess what? You need to make sure that you submit. You're always in submission to that same power. Because once you get disconnected from it, guess what happens to you? You become foiled. You become a liability. You're not going to become an asset no more. You understand? Read on. Verse 25. Watch this. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. You see that thing? They were without sin because the power was on high. They were able to command because Eve, Eve was given some power, obviously, under Adam. You understand? The thing that Eve did was only because of what? Because of instructions coming from Adam. When she went against that, guess what happened to Eve? She became spoiled. That position was spoiled because she got disconnected from the power that she was created out of. Understand that thing. So that's why now you see the black woman is crazy. The black man is crazy. Because once the black man gets hold of this Bible, guess what the black man is doing? The black man is getting his power back. Once the black woman gets her mind right, the black woman, she's going to be empowered from that power that was given to Adam. You understand? So this black woman empowerment that is, is talked about today, that will mean nothing. Because guess what? The black man is not in power like we are reading. So how can you be empowered? You are empowered and they say black woman empowerment and you are independent. That's not biblical. All of which those, those instruments are designed to make sure that you become even more spoiled. Because now you are independent and you are empowered. But guess what? Are you really empowered? No. You are empowered, but yet your, your, your black man is not in power, which is where the source of the power should come from. You understand? The, but the vet, coming back to the virtuous woman now, the virtuous woman understands that thing. She gets it. She understands it. She understands for me to get, to, get, to, get, uh, to get access to that power, I have to submit to the power that I was fashioned out of. Because you are created out of the man. That's why you are called woman. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me, now we're going to go to the second characteristic now. The second characteristic of the virtuous woman. The second characteristic of the virtuous woman, the virtuous woman understands her role. She understands her role in all of this. First, she understands the order that the Lord has set up. When it comes to what? When it comes to order, divine order, that the man is the leader, the man is the head, the man is her head of protection. Secondly, the virtuous woman, she understands that she understands her role, why she was created, and what role she has to play in this, in this creation. You understand? Give me that in the first Corinthians chapter 11, verse 5. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5. Read this thing. First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 5. Read that. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 5. Mm -hmm. 
But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. Oui. For that is even all one as if she were shaven. So now, when the woman is praying or prophesying, because when prophesying, you are doing what? You are, you, are, you, are, you are moving in the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the same power that was, that was, that, that was used to form Adam. The same power that you were made out of. You understand? So understanding that power, guess what you need to do? You need to make sure because your covering is a sign that you are under submission to what? To your head. That's why you have that head covering. You understand? Watch this. Give me, jump down to verse 7. Read verse 7 now. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Actually, you know what? For a man with, indeed. Start, start at verse 6. Start at verse 6. Read verse 6. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For if the woman be not covered. For if the woman be let her not also, Hold on. For if the woman be not covered, you understand? If the woman be not, if she is not covered, meaning if she is not under the covering of the man, because that your head covering is a symbol to show that you are under the subjection of a man, a leader, a power over you. You understand? Read. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. You see that thing? It says, let her be covered because you're supposed to be covered to show that actually you are under the power of the man or the head that is being set over you. You understand? Read on, verse 7. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. The man is the image. But the woman. Hold on. The man is the image and glory of God. That's what we read in Genesis 2, verse 7. The man is the image and glory of God. Read on. But the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. But you see that part when it says, read verse 6. I just want the first part of that verse. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For if the woman be not covered. Now jump down to the last part of the last part of the verse. Verse 6. The last part of verse 6. For if the woman be not covered, let her be covered. Let her be covered. Why? Jump down to verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse, verse start of verse 10. First Corinthians 11, verse 10. Verse 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. We we'll read verse 10 again. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 10. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. You see that thing is that for this cause, because of this, ought the woman to have power on her head because of what? Excuse me, because of the angels. The angels we talk about men on earth. Because what is an angel? An angel is a messenger. We are the messengers of the Lord. So the woman must be, must be what? Must be under the power of her husband. Must be under the power of the man that is set over them. You understand? That's why it says, for this cause, or the woman to have power on her head because of the angel. The power that you're going to have on your head is who? The man. Next verse. Nevertheless, Neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man, in the Lord. You see that thing? In the Lord. Because the woman was created to become a pillar of rest for the man. We work together. You understand? But the, the virtuous woman understands the power, the God's divine order, and the power that comes with it, and her role in it. You understand? Give me that in First Ezra chapter 4. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 15. Now, actually, before you get there, give me that in First Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 8. First Corinthians, start at verse 7. First Corinthians 11 and verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God. Come on. But 
the woman is the glory of the man. But the woman is the glory of the man. The woman is the glory of the man. Watch this thing. The man is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the, is the glory of the man. What you see right there, that's what you're looking at there, right there. That picture right there, the woman is the glory of the man. Because the woman was not created in the image of God, but the woman was created in the image of the man. The black man, Adam. You understand? Watch this. Read on verse 8. Verse 8. For the man is not of the woman, mm -hmm. but the woman of the man. You see that thing? The man is not of the woman. The man was not created out of the woman, but the what? But the woman of the man. The woman was created out of the man. That's what you see here. Okay, come on. Verse 9. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The man was not created to serve or glorify the woman, but the woman was created to serve and glorify the man. We were created, we were created to serve and glorify who? The, the most high, Christ. You understand? We were created to serve and glorify our head, which is who? Christ. The woman's role is that they were created to serve and glorify their Lord, which is who? Adam, the black man. Give me that in First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 15. First Ezra. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 15. Read that. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 15. Come on. Women have borne the king and all the people that bear rule by sea and land. Read on. Even of them came they. Read. And they nourished them up that planted the vineyards from whence the wine cometh. Come on. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women, Cannot men be? You see that thing right there? These also make garments for men. So making clothes for the men, so the men, your 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 Lord, the your, the, the powers that have set, been set over you, guess what? That's a glory. That's a glorious thing to do. That is a beautiful thing right there to do. You understand? So sisters that are involved in the clothing department, you understand? That's a beautiful department that you've got because it says by you doing that, it says. These also make garments for men. These bring glory unto men. And without women cannot men be. You understand? You should take pride in that thing. You should take pride in that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. The virtuous sister, she understands her role. You understand? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. 1 Corinthians chapter, 4, chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. So now it says God is not the author of confusion. Because guess what? When the sister is not walking in her rightful place, in a rightful divine order, guess what? You're going to call confusion. So the order that we read in the first point, the first characteristics of a virtuous woman, she understands the order of God. Once you go outside of that order, guess what you're going to do? You're going to bring confusion to the order. You're going to bring chaos to the order that the Lord has set up. But because you understand the order of the Lord, you're not going to bring confusion. So the, the two go hand in hand. You know, once you understand the, one, the, the first one, the, the second one is going to, when you deal with the second part, is going to help you to what? The, the first one will help you with the second character. You understand? We don't. Verse 34 now. Watch this. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Read. For it is not permitted to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience. As also saith the law. You see that thing? Let your women keep silence in the churches. Meaning what? Women are not allowed to be teaching the men in the churches, standing in the pulpit. That is not in the Bible. That's confusion. Because once they do that, what does that mean? That means now they are going against the order that we read in the first point. You understand? 
one of the, the, the value of the virtuous woman, she understands the order. Once she understands that order, she's not going to cause this confusion where she wants to be what? Equal or above the man. Because she already understands that God's divine order. You understand? Verse 34 again. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Read. Really? Let your women keep silence in the churches. Mm -hmm. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. Read. Really? They are commanded to be under obedience. Also saith the law. Yes, but they are commanded to be under obedience as also saith the law. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Genesis 3, verse 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. This is the law the apostle Paul is referencing. Okay? Genesis 3, verse 16. Read that. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow conception. And thy conception. Read that, read that part again. And thy what? I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So now it says he's going to multiply the woman's sorrow and conception. Because this is after Adam and Eve has sinned. Through Eve. You understand? That's why today, sisters, you, go, you get menstrual cramps. You understand? And child labor pains. You, you have pains when you give birth. Why is that? It's because of disobedience that happened during the time of Genesis. You understand? That's why every month you get those menstrual cramps. Why? It's a reminder of what happened during the time of Genesis. So those things are there to remind you. Those things are there as a, as a memorial of your disobedience. You understand? Read that again, verse 16. Genesis chapter 3, verse 16. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy contempt. Mm -hmm. In sorrow, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Come on. And he shall rule over thee. And he, your husband, shall rule over you. Your husband shall have power over you. Because the most High God gave power to the husband. Guess what? That power, you get access to it when you submit yourself to that man. You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of First Timothy 3 verse 5. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 5. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 5. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? You see what he's saying? If a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Because guess what? Our job, brothers, is to make sure that we, are, we know how to, we, we set our houses in order. That's our spiritual house, first and foremost. Then you're going to be able to take care of the church of the Most High God. And the house that you're also going to be able to rule over is the house with your wife and your children. You understand? Because the Lord has given you that power in the house. And that power that you have, you represent Christ in the house. The woman represents the disciple in the house. You understand? That's the, that's the mystery of marriage. It represents Christ and the church. So the, guess what the man? The man represents Christ in the house. The woman represents the disciple. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Genesis 18, verse 18. Because our forefather Abraham, he knew how to rule his house. And guess what? Our foremother Sarah, she was complete in complete subjection to that power that she was set that she was set under. You understand? Genesis 18. Genesis 18, verse 18. Read that. Genesis chapter 18, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. So now our forefather Abraham, he says, he shall surely become, surely, meaning it's a fact. Okay? You will become a great and mighty nation. Because we come out of that lineage of our forefather Abraham. And all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. All 12 tribes. Watch this, verse 19. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him. Mm. 
and they shall keep the ways of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. So now the Lord, he knew that Abraham is going to command his house. He's going to rule his household. You understand? He will rule his household according to the Bible. And guess what? Our foremother Sarah, she submitted to the power that Abraham was given by the Lord. Watch this. Jump up to verse 12. This is the example of that, that I know that Abraham will command his children and his household. That's going into what? His wife? You understand? His children and the servants that were under Abraham's domain. You understand? Genesis 18 verse 12. Read that. Genesis chapter 18 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, after I am waxed old, I shall have pleasure. My Lord being old also. What did she say? Saying, after I am waxed old, I shall have, shall I have pleasure. My Lord mm. being old also. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord being old also. You see what she understood? She understood that thing. My Lord. Let's understand. Let's see what the definition of my Lord is. Okay, Lord. Let's see. That's it right there. That is it right there. Let's get the definition of Lord. Okay. Okay, read that. Read that, read that definition. That one. The definition of Lord. A man of noble rank or high office. A nobleman. You see that thing? A man of noble rank or high office. A nobleman. Now watch this. Um, this is the one we want. Here's another one. Okay, read that. A master or ruler. A master or ruler. Okay, let's get some synonyms. Okay. Master. Master. Ruler. Next one. Leader. Mm -hmm. Chief. Superior. Superior. Come on. Monarch. Monarch. Read. Sovereign. Read that one. King. Mm. What did you say? King. Now, read Genesis 18 verse 12. Watch this thing. I want you to replace my Lord with King. Okay. Genesis chapter 18 verse 12. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my king being old also? You see that thing? My king. My Lord means my king. My king being, being old also. You see how you see what she understood? She understood the God's divine order that Ab Abraham was a king. You understand? A king a ruler, a leader, a master. And she was a mistress. Let's get the definition because some, some of you might be frowning upon that thing. Mistress. Okay. We need the old, we, no, no, don't look at that old, that this, um, read that. Don't, don't be looking at that part. No, no. Now that part, the today's definition of mistress is being completely destroyed. Okay. Let's look at this one. Read that. The definition of mistress. Mistress is an old form of address for a woman. For a woman. A woman, mistress, come on. It implies lady of the house. Lady of the house. Lady of the house. Come on. Especially a woman who is head of a household with domestic workers. Meaning what? With servants. Our foremothers, they had servants. You understand? So the, 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 the true definition of the word mistress, it means what? You are the lady of the house. And guess what? You have servants under you. So the power that Abraham had, Sarah, she, she fed off of that power.
because she also had power over the servants that she had, her maidens. You understand? So when you say, my Lord, the sisters don't really understand the heaviness of that thing. Because the power that your husband has, guess what? You're going to feed off of that power. And you're going to use that power to rule over what? To rule over your servants, your maidens, your helpers. You see that thing? That's how it's going to be in the kingdom. You understand? Go back to Genesis 18 verse 12. Read that again. Genesis chapter 18 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. You see that thing? Because Abraham commanded his house. He was the master of his house. His wife and his children and all the servants. You understand? And all the servants. Watch this. Give me Genesis 16 verse 1. Real quick. I, I just want to give an example that I gave that uh, when it says mistress. Genesis 16 verse 1. Genesis chapter 16 verse 1. Come on. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare, no, bare him no children. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. Come on. And Sarah, Sarai said unto a Abram, Behold now, the Lord had restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. Come on. And, and Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Because now, our foremother Sarai, she couldn't conceive. She could not have children. So now she said, she said to uh, our forefather Abraham, listen, go in unto my handmaid, you understand? So she can bring children, she can uh, bring children for on my behalf. She was what? She was a surrogate. You understand? Read. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan and gave her to husband Abram to be his wife. Come on, watch this. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. Meaning what? She started to disrespect our foremother. Because our foremother couldn't have children. Now she had, she, she had a child by Abraham. Now she's being disrespectful to her mistress, to the lady of the house. Because remember, she's a servant. She's a slave. Now she's being disrespectful to the mistress now, the lady of the house, our former. Next verse. Watch this. And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. So now she's saying, listen, actually, I was wrong to give you this woman. Now the now that she has conceived, she bare a child. Now she's disrespectful unto me. That's what she's saying. Next verse. Verse 6 now. Watch what Abraham says to this thing. But Abraham said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. You see what he says? He said, listen, she's yours. She's yours to command. You understand? She's your servant. That's what he's saying. Meaning what? You have power to do whatsoever you must do with her. That's what he's saying. Read. Do to her as it pleases thee. Because she is the lady of the house. And this, 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 this handmaid, she was being disrespectful. Meaning what? She forgot her place. You understand? Read. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. You see that thing? When Sarai dealt hardly with her. Meaning what? She made sure that, listen, because Abraham gave her what? Gave her the cut blanche to do whatsoever she must do because this woman was disrespecting him. You understand? Because Abraham had power. Guess what? Sarai also, she that power was bestowed on her to deal with the with the servants when when they were going off, being disrespectful. You understand? But in order for Sarai to be able to have had that power, guess what she was getting it from? From Abraham. Because she was she submitted herself completely to Abraham, because she knew where the power is. You understand? The virtuous woman will understand that thing. 
You understand? Watch this. Give me the book of First Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. First Timothy 2 verse 9. The virtuous woman understands her role. You understand? This is the role of the virtuous woman. She understands that if I submit myself to this, to this power, to this head that is set over me, these are the things that I'm going to have to have. And the role that I have to play, I need to make my Lord look good. You understand? That's a beautiful thing. Because our job as men, our job is to make Christ look good. You understand? The job of Christ is to make the most I look good. You understand? Give me that in 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. Read that. 1 Timothy 2 verse 9. Come on. In like manner also, mm -hmm. that the women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Stop right there. That what? That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. That women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Meaning you must dress up in modest apparel. The apparel that the Lord has ordained for women to dress in. Because when you dress that way, guess what? You represent your Lord. You represent your King. Because guess what? When you dress up in, in, in the type of dress code that your cleavage is showing, your, your thighs are showing, you understand? The crack of your behind is showing. Guess what? The utmost disrespect that you can do to the black man. Just dress like that. The reason why the black man today is okay with that is because his mind is corrupt. He doesn't know that actually this is the, this, I'm being disrespected by this woman. She's not honoring me the way she's dressed up. But because the black man is corrupt, that's why he's okay with that. You understand? The mind is gone. Okay? Read on. With what? With what? Read that part. With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. With shamefacedness. Because for you to be able to dress up in modest apparel, that means your mind is well instructed. You understand? Your mind is well instructed. You understand where your veil is. The virtuous woman understands her veil. She understands her honor. She understands that my body is sacred. My body is an asset. And is an asset to the investor. Who's the investor? The husband. Nobody must be able to have access to the asset. No. Only the husband has access to those assets. The minute you start to mistreat them assets, you don't invest anymore, guess what happened to those assets? It becomes a liability. You understand? It becomes a liability. You have to short the stock. That's what they say. That's how they call it. You short the stock. You understand? We don't. With shamefacedness and sobriety, mm. not with braided hair, or gold or pearls or costly array. So the apostle, the apostle Paul is not saying women must not what they must not uh, braid their hair. He's not saying that. He does He's not saying you mustn't put on beautiful gold um, ornaments and all or pearls or costly array. He's not saying that. He's saying that must not be your veil. Your veil must not be in, in. You must not put that above the laws of God. I'll give an example. Today, when you see our sisters. Our sisters, they dress up. And the way they dress up, first, they don't dress up in modest apparel. The reason why they dress up in all of the it's not mentioned either. But the way they dress, they dress in a promiscuous way. Because they think, if I dress like this, men will love me. Men will, will actually make me to be someone honorable. No. So their mind, with it's way, is only on the outward appearance. But the outward, outward appearance is a testament to what's inside. If you dress modestly, it shows that something is going on in your spirit. You try to change. You understand? Read on. Verse 10. Verse 10. But which becometh woman professing godliness mm -hmm. with good works. You see that thing? So not only must you dress modestly, but your speech must profess godliness with good works. You must have good works. That's your role. You must have good works in the body. You must have good works in your household. You understand? To honor and reverence your husband. You understand? Watch this. Give me um give me second, give me first Timothy 2 verse, jump down to verse 11 in fact. Verse 11. Because your role as a as a virtuous woman, your job is to understand that if I when I submit, guess what? 
I'm, I'm becoming an asset. I'm building with my law. I'm building with my king. You understand? The minute you start to go against this, you start to dress immorally. Guess what you are doing? You are pulling the house down. You are plucking the house down. You understand? That's why you notice, you ever notice, a lot of the times you notice that our sisters, even the black man that is his mind is corrupt is in the world. The way he behaves, you, you see him just doing things that are out of character. You understand? And the people looking at the woman, they say, no, but he's a good, she's a good woman. They are not looking at her spiritually. That woman is the devil the Bible speaks of. So this man is actually reacting. He's throwing tantrums based on how this woman is behaving. He just doesn't know how to explain what he's saying. He doesn't know how to explain how he feels when he looks at this woman. He can't explain it. It's a spiritual thing. It needs a spiritual man to look at it, to be able to explain it. But he will behave out of character. Why? Because there's something off about how this woman is behaving. And I don't know what it is. And I don't know how to fix it. Hence the frustration. You understand? Verse 11. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Read that again. Read that again verse 11. What does the Bible say? First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Come on. Let the woman learn in silence mm. with all subjection. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Not with resistance, all subjection. What does that mean? Learn in silence with all subjection. Here's what it means by that. Give me Matthew 18 verse 3. Here's what it means. Learn in silence with all subjection. Okay? The book yeah, of Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. Read. Really? And he said, verily, I say unto you, Mm -hmm. except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. So Christ is, is, giving, an, is giving a similitude of how you must be in this truth. You must learn in silence with all subjection. Meaning what? The command that is coming up from your Lord, from the leadership, follow the counsel with all subjection. Not follow the counsel with I like this part of the council. I like this part. I like, but this part, mm -mm, I don't like that. Guess what? You're not moving in the right spirit. You understand? With all subjection. How do you, how, how must you do that? You must be as a child. You ever seen a child? A child, you say, okay, they will ask you, Dave, what's that? That's the sky. So what color is that? No, that color is blue. The child is not going to say, okay, oh no, that's green. No, the child is not going to say that. The child, because the, guess what? The child, the child is, wants to learn. Naturally, they want to learn. You understand? What's that? That's a car. You understand? What does it eat? It eats grass. The child is not going to say, oh no, the cow eats meat. The child is not like that. He says, that's how we must be. Learn in silence with all subjection. Your, eye, your ears open, your mouth closed, so you can receive. Why is he saying that? Give me Sarah 26. Let's go back there. Sarah 26 verse 14. Here's the precept for 1 Timothy 2 verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 14. Mm -hmm. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Come on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? There is nothing so much worse as a mind well instructed. In order for this mind to be well instructed, guess what this woman must be? This woman must be quiet. That's one of the hardest things for the black woman to do is to be quiet. You understand? That is the hardest thing to do. One of the hardest things to do for the black woman is tell the black woman to be quiet. Shut up, black woman. Be quiet. Listen and learn. Listen. She, that, that's the hardest thing for the black woman to do. Why? Because she's been taught to run her mouth. Not realizing that her running her mouth, she's a depreciating asset. No man wants to deal with that. No man wants to deal with that thing. A loud mouth black woman. There's no black man that wants to deal with that thing. That's why they always complain. Oh no, he's always cheating. No, he's cheating with this woman. He's cheating with that woman. Why is that? Because you've got a big black mouth. 
You don't want to be quiet. That's the reason why those things happen. You understand? Read that again, verse 14. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Come on. And there is nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. You see that thing? The, the Lord is letting me know that a mind that is well instructed, the, or the, the mind, the gift of the Lord is a mind that is well instructed. Because while you, when you instruct this mind, that mind is silent. Why is it silent? To receive instruction so they can execute the instruction according to what was commanded. Because to, to be able to be successful, you must be a good listener. You need to be able to pay attention and listen. Because when you listen, guess what? You're going to be successful in when you execute the instructions. That's why I said listening is a skill. When you listen, you know how to, you, you get to follow the instructions well. You understand? That's why it says there's nothing so beautiful or worse than a mind that is well instructed. Read verse 15 now. Come on. Ecclesiastes 26 verse 15. Read. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. Mm. And her continent mind cannot be valued. And a continent mind cannot be valued. Why? Because this woman right here, she's she what? She's silent, she's loving, and she's faithful. You understand? Is that that's a double grace right there? Is that 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 woman right there? She can you cannot put a price on that woman. You cannot put a price on a woman like that. She's an asset, she's a possession. You understand? Because that mind is well instructed, that mind is valued. That mind is got value. She's an asset. Her mind is got value. Everything about her is an asset. You understand? Read on verse 16. Verse 16. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven. When the sun arises, is a beautiful sight to behold. You understand? You see it in the early hours of the morning. When the sun comes out, beautiful sight to behold. Watch this. As the sun, when it arises in the high heaven. So is the beauty of a good wife mm. in the ordering of her house. That's a beautiful thing right there. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. Guess what? That house starts with the spiritual house. The ordering of her house it starts with the, with the spiritual house. Then the physical house. To make sure that everything is in order for her Lord, her King. And when she conducts herself like that, guess what? Whether the woman has children, the children, if the children is a boy or girl, guess what? Both the girl or the boy, they are both going to learn from the behavior and conduct of their mother. Because the, the son is going to look at the virtuous woman, is going to look at this virtuous woman, his mother, say, Woo! That right there, that's a beautiful thing right there. So guess what? When the son grows up, He's going to want to marry somebody just like her, just like his mother. And I don't mean that in a negative sense. No. Because she, he saw the way her, his mother treats his father. He said, wait a minute. Guess what? The, the daughter also, she's going to look at them and say, you know, I want to be just like my mother. My mother, she was a wise, she was a wise and honest and faithful woman. She was wise. She was full of good works. You understand? A virtual, that's, that's the value of a virtuous woman. You understand? First Timothy 2 verse 11. Go back there. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 11. Read. Let the woman learn in silence mm -hmm. with all subjection. With all subjection. All subject, not some, all subjection. Read. But I suffer not the woman to teach. I suffer not. He says, I suffer not a woman to teach. Meaning a woman cannot be, that's why we read in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 34, that women cannot, they, they must remain silent in the churches. What that means? No teaching. You cannot be teaching the men. You can't teach the men. You understand? That's what that law actually means. When it says women must keep silence in the church. So does that mean that you cannot greet the sister? Sister, how are you doing? No. It's talking about the sisters cannot exalt herself above the men. And she cannot be teaching the men. But the sisters can teach. But who can they teach? They can teach other women and the children. 
That's their role. You understand? They can teach other women, though, and the children, not the men. Read on. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man. Mm -hmm. But to be in silence. You see that thing? It says, but to not to usurp authority over the man. That's why in class, when I ask the sister, I say, okay, I'm, I'm going to ask the sister a question. She's not teaching. Because I heard some of you, so I, I don't know who the English was. No, they must not be silent. No, you don't mean that. It's talking about they cannot. You see that part there? It says, um, no, you sought authority over the men, meaning wanting to be above the men, but to be in silence. That's what the Apostle Paul was examining. He was explaining to the church of Corinth and to Timothy. You understand? Read. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. You see that thing? Adam was formed first, then Eve was created out of Adam. Read on. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Because at that point, what was Eve doing? Eve was rebelling against Adam because she wanted to be equal or above Adam. When she did that, guess what? That's when she was deceived. That's when the position was spoiled because she did not want the hedge that the Lord had set over her. When she rejected that, she was what? The position became spoiled. Who spoiled it? The serpent spoiled the mind of Eve. That's what you see today with the black woman. When she rejected that order that we read in the first point, that's exactly what happened. She was deceived. That's why today you see the black woman so deceived and crazy. is because she rejected the order that was set up. Okay? Give us the book of Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. In the Apocrypha, Judith 8, verse 24. Judith, chapter 8, verse 24. Come on. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, mm -hmm. and the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us. Now, that's some heavy stuff what Judith is saying. Because remember, Judith had a reputation, she had a good report among the men of Israel. When she spoke, you understand? We were able, the, the, our forefathers were able to listen because she had a good reputation. Whenever she opened her mouth, she opened her mouth with wisdom. That's why the man was, it's like a sister coming and saying, um, uh, say, I have, a, I have an idea, such and such. We examine your record. Because when you come with that idea, guess what we're going to do? We're going to listen to it. We're going to give you time to explain it. But if there's always some issues with you, guess what? I'm not going to listen to nothing you say. Why? Because you're just full of trouble. Okay? So, read verse 24 again. Judith chapter 8, verse 24. Come on. Now, therefore, oh brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. Mm -hmm. Because their hearts depend on us. And the sanctuary, and the house, and the altar rest upon us because guess what you need to understand that we can the, the nation of israel is not made up of men only it's made up of the women also and the children so guess what well as we are raising up our job is to get ourselves right so we can teach the sisters to get their minds right so they can be able to teach the children guess what when we go to war the job of the role of the sisters is to teach the younger sisters that are coming in and to teach the children to be an example to the younger sisters that are coming in and to be an example to the children. Because if you want your children to model specific behavior, you need to what? You need to lead by example because they want to follow that example. You understand? So likewise, that's what our foremother Judith was saying. She understands the role that she has to play, that she has to be an example to those that are coming in, to the young, to the young women, you understand? And to the, to the young girls that are coming in, to the children. So, so that you know that that's why the sisters, they must be well studied. Why? Because when you when you are not there, when you go to war, when you go to work, wherever, whatever it is, she's the one that is sitting with the children. So her job is to make sure that she teaches the children. How is she going to do that if she won't study? 
if you don't know the scriptures? How is she going to be able to be that righteous elder mother in the, in the congregation to be able to guide the young women? How is she going to do that if she don't stand? How is she going to do that if she don't submit herself under the leadership if she's not married? How is she going to do that? How is she going to become an asset? A virtuous woman thinks like that. You understand? But then Jezebel sisters, they don't think like that. When, when they hear what we say, guess what they think in their head? Oh no, I'm being oppressed. They are oppressing me. Women bashing. Listen, sit your simple behind down and learn something. Okay? Watch this. Give me Titus 2 verse 1. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Come on. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Mm -hmm. Okay, read verse 1 again. Read verse 1 again for me. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Read. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Is a speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. So the role of a virtuous woman is that she needs to what? Her speech must be according to what is written. This virtuous woman, she understands Joshua 1 and 8. She understands that her conversation must be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. She understands that. Watch this. Give me that in Philippians 1. Philippians chapter 1. Verse 27. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. She understands this thing right here. Watch this. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the, the gospel of Christ. Come on. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs that ye stand fast in, the, in one spirit. Mm. Within one spirit with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. You see that thing? Your conversation must be as become as the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel of Christ? The laws of God. That's the gospel of Christ. So it's your conversation must be about God's commandment. That's why it says, uh, speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. The gospel of Christ is sound doctrine. Go back to Titus 2 verse 1. Titus chapter 2 verse 1. Mm -hmm. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. You see that thing? The things that become sound doctrine is the gospel of Christ. Jump down to verse 3 now. Titus chapter 2 verse 3. The aged women likewise, mm -hmm. that, they, that they be in behavior as it becometh holiness. Come on. Not false accusers, not given too much wine. Teachers of good things. That's the role of the virtuous woman. The role of the virtuous woman, she understands that, guess what? She must be in behavior as becometh holiness. Meaning her conduct, her mannerism must be according to what? According to the laws of God. She must what? She must, she must, she understands the order that the Lord has set up. What we read in Sirach 26, verse 13, Sirach 26, verse 16, she understands that. She understands her role. She understands that she must learn in silence with all subjection. You understand? She understands that she must open her mouth in wisdom. She must know, she must under, she understands that if I submit myself, if I conduct myself according to what this Bible says, I will be an asset to my Lord, my King, and I'm going to be an asset to my nation. The younger women that are coming in, the children that are coming in, you become an asset. You understand? It says, not false accusers. You mean, don't gossip. Don't be running your mouth. If you don't have anything to say, just be quiet. Okay? But when you open your mouth, open your mouth in wisdom. The laws of God. You understand? That's how you're going to build a good report. Okay? Not given too much wine. Teachers of good things. Your role is to teach the good things. Give me that in Romans 7 verse 12. There must be teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Romans chapter 7 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. You see that thing? The laws of God is holy, and the commandments are holy, and they are just and they are good. So you must be teachers of the laws and the commandments of God. That's what it means. It says teachers of good things. Watch this. I want to go back to that part when it says 
not given to much one. Watch this. Sirach 26. This is the opposite of the virtuous woman <clears throat> that we're going to touch on. Give me Sirach 26, verse 8. Ecclesiasticus 26 and verse 8. Ecclesiasticus 26, verse 8. A drunken woman and a gather abroad mm. causeth great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. You see that thing? A drunken woman and a gather abroad. Meaning this woman, she's a drunk and she runs her mouth. She's loud. She's got the characteristics of a whore. She's a whore. You understand? It says, a drunken woman and a gather abroad causes great anger. That's why when a woman is drunk, when a woman is loud, she's disrespectful. That's the filth in Isaiah 4 and 4. Guess what? It says that type of woman causes great anger because that's some Jezebel demon. Okay? She will not cover her own shame. What is the shame? She's drunk and she's loud. Drunken woman and loud woman, she will, they will not cover that shame because she's an ostrich. The head is in the sand, her bums are out. She thinks nobody can see. You understand? That is what that is the opposite of a virtuous woman. That is the opposite of a virtuous woman. Watch this. Let's go back. Um, let's go back to Titus 2. Read verse 3 again. Titus 2, verse 3. Mm -hmm. The aged woman, likewise, that they be in behavior as it becometh holiness, not false accusers, nor given too much wine, teachers of good things. Teachers of good things, teachers of the laws of God, conduct, speech, dress code, you understand? The, uh, making sure that the house is in order, how to serve the man. Let me repeat that again. How to serve the man. Okay, we by the way, we're gonna meet as a congregation on the 28th. Sisters, you need to be instructed on how to serve. Okay, everything is gonna be laid down for you so that the next time you know how to do it right. Okay, read on. Come on, verse 4. Verse 4 that they may teach the young woman to be sober. You see that that's your role, that's the role of the virtuous woman. The virtuous woman understands. You see, the virtuous woman, she's nation-minded. She's about, her mind is about the, the building of the nation of Israel. So she's going to understand, I must submit myself under this power. Because guess what? That's where I'm going to have the power and the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to do, to be a Titus II woman. But as long as you don't submit yourself to the power that all wisdom and all might is being, is being um, channels, guess what? You're not going to know how to do it. You're not going to be the virtuous woman. You're not going to think about your nation. You understand? Read verse 4 again. Titus chapter 2 verse 4. Mm -hmm. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Read. To love their husbands. Mm. To love their children. You see that thing? So the, the, their role is, they need to know, they must what? They must teach the young women to be sober. Not be drunk, not be loud mouth, because once they get drunk, they run their mouth, they get horny, they have sex, they have abortion, one night stands, you name it, they do it. Okay? Guess what? That's not an asset, that's a liability. That's a black ashy demon right there. Leave it be. Okay? Read. Read verse 4 again. I want, the, I want something else there. Titus 2 verse 4. Come on. That they may teach the young women to be sober. Mm -hmm. To love their husbands. Read. To love their children. To love their husbands and to love their children. On 32, I'm going to go deeper on, into this topic. It says they must be taught how to love their husbands and to love their children. Guess what? How do you know? How are you going to teach the young women to love their husbands? How are you going to teach the young women to love their children? How are you going to do that? To be sober. You need to have learned that from a man. That's why Adam was created. He was created out of Adam. After he was created out of Adam, she was taken to Adam so Adam can teach her. That's where you learn. You learn those things from the man. Because the man has the wisdom. Because the Lord is channeling his power through the man. His righteousness is through the man of Israel. You understand? So now, you learn those things. How to love your husband? You learn from who? You learn from the husband. Because your husband will teach you, this is how you must do. If you're not married, the leadership will teach you. 
So that the day you get married, you know how to conduct yourself in your marriage. Guess what? Now that you now you are married, you start to have experience and all of that. Guess what happened? Younger sisters coming in, you're gonna teach them how to love their husband because you have been taught. And you are on the job also because you are married. And if you're not married, you have experience in this too of being subject to the leadership to teach you how to deal with the younger sisters coming in, how to deal with the children. You understand? Know, that's your role. She understands that. She understands that men have their role. She has her role. But she's helping to build the nation. That is the mindset of the virtuous woman. Brothers, that's the type of woman you must look for. Okay? Read on, verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, mm -hmm. good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That's some heavy stuff. To be discreet. Sarah 26, 18. Go back there. Sarah 26, verse 18. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 13. Mm -hmm. The grace of a wife delighteth her husband, mm. and her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten his bones. That's why he says that this young, the aged woman must teach the young woman to be discreet because discretion will fatten your husband's bones. Your husband will, will trust you. Your husband will understand, I've got a pillow of rest right there. I don't got to worry about nothing. That's what that means. Okay? Hold this. Give me Proverbs 31. Proverbs chapter 31. Hmm. This class is going to go long. Just bear with me. I have to get this out. Proverbs chapter 31. Start at verse, start at verse 10. Read verse 10. Proverbs 31 verse 10. Read that. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Uh -huh. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above ruby. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Mm. For her price is above is far above rubies. He says, who can find a virtuous woman? We went, we, we got the definition of virtuous, upright. Let's get it again, in case we forgot. Because I know some of you have forgotten that. Let's read it. Okay. Let's get the definition of the word virtuous. One more again. Okay. Let me share my screen. One second. Read that. The definition of virtuous. Mm -hmm. Adjective. Come on. Having or showing high moral standards. Having or showing high moral standards. High moral standards. Read the next part. Archaic meaning what? Um, archaic meaning as in old. Read that. Ancient definition. Archaic definition. Chaste. Mm. Typically used of a woman. You see that thing? Typically used of a woman, chaste, chaste. Watch this. Hmm. Read that definition right there. Undefiled. Undefiled. That's a that that right there. That's a virtuous woman right there. So sisters, just because okay, hold on, because we've been in the world, we've been around the block. If you know what I mean. When you come into this truth, you can be a virtuous woman. Because you are a new creation in Christ. So you build from that. You can become that virtuous woman. So don't get it twisted. Okay? Don't get discouraged. Don't know. Oh, no, but I'm not a virgin anymore. No. no. You spiritually, your mind must change. Okay? While you're waiting, the parachute will go back. Okay? Go back to where was that? Proverbs 31, verse 10. Read that again. Proverbs 31, verse 10. Read. Who can find a virtuous woman mm -hmm. for her price? Is far above rubies. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Meaning, this woman is priceless. A virtuous woman is a chaste woman. She's undefiled. In her mind, she's a righteous woman. She's upright. She's right minded, irreproachable, blameless. You understand? Watch this. Give me Sarah 26, verse 1. Because I wanted to go, in, go into this. Sarah 26 verse 1, read that thing. We know now the definition of a virtuous of the word virtuous. Uh, Sarah 26 verse 1, read that. 
Ecclesiasticus chapter 26, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous wife, mm. for the number of his days shall be doubled. You see that thing? So understand that thing. It says, Blessed is the man that has a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be doubled. Because guess what? This woman, she's like what you read about in the book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8. She's like that. So guess what? The number of this man's days will be done because she's got a what? A pillar of rest. So this virtuous woman understands her role on her, the impact that she will have on her lord, her king. So guess what? She will tailor herself to make sure that I don't stress this man out. I don't stress my husband out. You understand? I must respect and honor him. I'm not saying they're not, you're not going to have disagreements. You will. But the way you deal with it is gonna is, is, is gonna the way you deal with the disagreement is gonna determine whether you are the black ashy demon or you are the double grace, which is a gift of the Lord. It's up to you, the choice is yours. Because the way you deal with it is gonna determine which which category you fall under. The black ashy demon Jezebel or the virtuous woman who's a double grace, the gift of the Lord. Okay? Read that again, verse one, Sarah 26 and 1. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 1. Mm-hmm. Blessed is the man that hath a virtuous woman, for the number of his days shall be doubled. Read verse 2. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. You see that thing? That's a beautiful thing right there. Okay? Read that part again, verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 26, verse 2. Mm-hmm. A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband, and he shall fulfill his years of his life in peace. You see that thing? A virtuous woman rejoiceth her husband. Like wisdom, we read in Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8. You will rejoice your husband. It says, and he shall fulfill the years of his life in peace. Listen, if you don't have peace of mind, because guess what? When you get married, you don't have peace of mind. You don't have a virtuous woman. You have a demon on your head. You understand? Read on. Verse 3. Verse 3. A good wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. You see that thing, brother? The, if, if, if you want to see if the, what your wife is, is a gift of the Lord, you need to actually reflect back on yourself. Okay? Because she's a reflection of you. If she is an ashy black demon, guess what you are? You are an ashy black devil. Read that again, verse 3. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 3. Uh-huh. A wife is a good portion, which shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. A good wife is a good por- A good wife is a virtuous woman. A good wife is a virtuous wife. Okay? It says, we shall be given in the portion of them that fear the Lord. A virtuous woman will be given to a virtuous man. Sarah will be given to Abraham. Jezebel will be given to Ahab. That's how it goes. Watch this. There are 26, verse 23. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 23. This is what I mean by that. There are 26, 23. Read that. Ecclesiastes 26, verse 23. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. You see that thing? A but, wicked, hold on. A wicked woman is given as a portion to a wicked man. Jezebel will be given to Ahab. Sarah will be given to Abraham. That's just how it goes. Read. But a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. You see that thing right there? But a godly woman, a virtuous woman, will be given to them that fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Most High God, guess what? Your portion will be what? That wicked Jezebel demon woman. And she will make your life a living hell. Understand that thing. Watch this. Go back to Titus 2, verse 5. Titus chapter 2, verse 5. Titus chapter 2, verse 5. Mm-hmm. To be discreet, taste, keepers at home, mm-hmm. good, obedient to their own husbands. That the word of the that the word of God be not blasphemed. That the word of God be not blasphemed. 
You understand? Good kids. Keep us at home. You understand? They must also what? Know how to love their husband. They must be taught to do that. Watch this. Go back to Proverbs 31 verse 10. Okay? Proverbs 31 verse 10. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Because this virtuous woman, she understands her role. Her role is to bring what? Sarah 26 verse 13. Because that's where we were. I don't want to lose the thought. Sarah 26 verse 13. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 13. The grace of a wife delighted her husband. Mm -hmm. And her discretion will fatten his bones. Her discretion will fatten his bones. Because why? This man can safely trust in this woman. Because this woman, she's faithful, she's loving, she's silent. Guess what? Her mind is well instructed. She's valued. You understand? She's an asset to this man. Watch this. Proverbs 31, verse 11 now. When it says her discretion will fetch his bones, this is what it means. Proverbs 31, verse 11. Proverbs 31, verse 11. Read. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her. Uh -huh. It says what? The heart of her husband uh -huh. doth safely trust in her. The heart of her husband safely trust in this woman. Read. So that he shall have no need of spoil. So that he has no need of spoil. Because what happens when this woman gets spoiled? Is because now she's no longer in subjection to that power. The minute you, the sister goes off, that means she's no longer in subjection. She's not. She's disconnected to the power that was set over her. That's what happened. You understand? Read that again. Proverbs chapter thirty-one verse eleven. Mm -hmm. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no shall, shall have no need of spoil. Come on, verse 12. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. You see that thing right there? That's why it says, her discretion will fetch in his bones. It says she will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Because this woman is not a fool. This woman right here, she's a wise woman. She built in her house. And the way she builds her house, she makes sure that she honors her Lord. She understands where her power comes from, from her king. You understand? Okay? Give me that in 1 Timothy 5 verse 14. Because here's another character. I'm, I'm still dealing with the second characteristic. I don't think I'm going to do all four, because I have four. Two I'll do tomorrow. Okay? I might have three series of this. Okay? Give me 1 Timothy 5 verse 14. Because remember it says, they must be chaste. Keep us at home. They must take care of the household. You understand? There must not be gossipers. First Timothy 5 verse 14. First Timothy chapter 5 verse 14. Come on. I will therefore that the younger women marry, mm. bear children, guide the house, okay, come on. give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. You see that thing? It says, I will therefore that the younger women marry. Who's going to guide these younger women? You or the sisters. Your job is to teach these young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be chaste, keep us at home, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. That's what the Apostle Paul is explaining here. Okay? It says they must get married, bear children, give, guide the house, meaning keep us at home. Look after the house. Give none occasion to the adversary. Who's the adversary? The devil to speak reproachfully, meaning what? Dis in, in, in the in speaking disrespectfully to the Lord, to the men that is set over you. There are 26 15. They must guide the house and give because when they are guiding the house, they are taking care of the house, the children. You understand, even if you are working. Here's another thing. Because here's another thing that couples they usually fight about. The man is working, the woman is working. The woman, she thinks because she's working, she thinks she doesn't have to be doing anything in the house. She'd be saying, oh, no, but I'm tired. I can't cook. Listen, that's not biblical, okay? You know that, the spirit jumped on me on that thing. 
You sisters, do not, that spirit must not jump on you. Where you and your husband are working, you're going to be saying, now I'm tired, I had a long day at work. Listen, that does not mean nothing. You need to still be able to take care of the house. You need to cook for your husband. You need to cook for the children. You become that high value wife. If you want to be that virtuous woman, that's exactly what you must do. Because, uh, because one, of the, one of the things that um, couples fight, you understand, is, is this. Is because because today, if you look, if you notice, the black women, they are more educated than the black men. I'm talking about Esau's education now, the education of our oppressor. So because of that, they look down on the black men. That's what's going on in the black community. The black women that have degrees and all of that, they are any big bucks more than the black men. They look down on the black men. They disrespect the black men so much so that even in the house. They say, I wear pants in the house because I earn more than you. Guess what? Whatever, what you earn, guess where, it, guess where it goes? It goes to your husband, in case you didn't know. What you earn goes to your husband. You understand? I hope you understand it. I hope you know that thing. It belongs to the house. You understand? So what you need to understand, do not be looking down on the black men. Okay? Don't be looking down on the black men, all right? Because that's another thing also. You find that the woman is a CEO in the company. She is a big shot. When she gets home, she still wants to behave as though she's still at work, bossing people around. No. When you get home, you switch to wife mode. You switch to wife mode. You understand? That's your lord. Even if your lord is, is, is not earning how, as much as you earn, even if your lord is not working the type of job that you work, but guess what? You must still submit yourself to that man. Let me say that again. You must still submit yourself to that man. Reverence that man. Respect him. Honor him. That says the Lord. Your degrees don't mean nothing in the sight of the most high. Your value is what we are going over. Because I don't want to hear these problems going forward. Because in the future, I know some Jezebel sister will pop up. Guess what? We're going to shut it down. We don't want to have that. I'm educated. You're not going to tell me nothing. Get this and this stuff. Keep it moving. Get the hell out of here. We don't need you. You understand? Why? Because that type of mindset is what the black woman does today to the black men. So you brothers, just look out for them. Because Jezebel sisters are going to walk in. They're going to move in that spirit. Because you are deceived by the big booty, the big breast, guess what? You're going to fall. You're going to fall under her skirt. She will bring death and destruction to you. I'm going to just put it out there, okay? Give me Salah 26 verse 16. I'm almost done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, I have to cut this last one. Okay, let me just finish uh, the second characteristics of the virtuous woman. Salah 26 verse 16, okay? Ecclesiastes chapter 26 verse 16. Mm -hmm. As the sun, when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. You see that thing? Your beauty, your beauty is also seen through the way that you order your physical house. Meaning when we come to your house, we come and visit, guess what? Your house must be in order. Don't, it must not be in order because we come into visit, as an example. It must always be in order because you understand the ordinances that has been delivered unto you. Keep your house in order. Make sure that your house is presentable. You understand? At all times, your spiritual house and your physical house. Okay? That's your road. That is your road. Give me Tobit 2 verse 10. Tobit chapter 2 verse 10. Read that. Tobit chapter 2 verse 10. I'm going to be rushing through this one. Tobit 2 verse 10. Read that. Tobit chapter 2 verse 10. And I knew not that there were sparrows in the wall, and mine eyes being opened, the sparrows muted warm dung into mine eyes, and a whiteness came in, came in my eyes, and I went to the physicians, but they helped me not. Mm -hmm. Moreover, Achaeus did nourish me until I went to Elamias. Uh huh. So what what's happening is that Tobit went blind. Tobit was blind for eight years. Tobit was blind for eight years. Okay. Now watch what. 
Watch what this woman does. This is a virtuous woman right here. Watch this thing. Next verse. Verse sisters, pay attention to this thing. Verse 11. Verse 11. And my wife, Anna, did take woman's work to do. You see that thing? Woman's work. Meaning what? This woman was not a fool. This woman had a skill. She had a skill. When my husband was no longer working, when my husband was providing for everybody, taking care of everyone, guess what? Now my husband is blind. What am I going to do? Okay, I've got a skill. You understand? I'm a chef. I can cook. I'm a, I know how to bake. So on and so forth. I can sew. You understand? I have a, sub, this such, such and such qualification. Guess what you do? You help your household. You help your husband. You take women's work to do. Brothers do not marry a lazy sister. Oh, no. Mm -mm. Don't marry a lazy sister. Okay? Because when things go wrong, which they will, not they might, things will go wrong when you get married. So you need to make sure that you marry a sister that has got a good head on her shoulder, that she's going to be able to assist you, to help you. We're in captivity. You understand? This is survival. You need a sister that will be able to assist you. She's got a skill, so on and so forth. Okay? Give me Proverbs 31 verse 13. Proverbs 31. I need a full class on, the, the, on this chapter right here. But I'm just going to touch on it. Proverbs 31 verse 13. Read that. This is going into the virtuous woman understands her role. We are going into the second characteristic of the virtuous woman. Proverbs 31 verse 13. Watch this. Proverbs 31 verse 13. Uh -huh. Seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. You see, this woman right here is that she seeketh wood and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. That means this woman, she what? She, she has women's work to do. She's not a lazy woman. You understand? She's always busy making sure that her house is in order, her children are, are looking glorious, her husband is in proper order. You understand? Watch this, read on. Verse 14, she is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. You see that thing? It says she is like the merchant ships. What do these merchant ships do? They travel from place to place to collect to find the best food or the best clothes for her, for, for her husband, for her household. You see what she says? She says she bringeth her food from far. Meaning what? This is not lazy to go shopping. Meaning what? She knows where to get the best food. You know that, um, okay, I need to know where to go and buy the best, the best veggies I can find them here. The best fruits I'll find them here. The best meat is going to be found there. She's not afraid to travel distances to go and look for those, the best of the best for her household. She's not lazy to do that. So sisters, we are meeting soon at the congregation on the 28th. You better practice these things, okay? You must know where to get the best fruits and veggies because you're going to do in salad and all of that stuff. You're going to be bringing those things. We're going to deal with the meat, okay? But you need to know how to put those things together. So now, your Proverbs 31 skill, that's where you practice it. You are rehearsing. You need to know where to find the best vegetables, the best fruits. When you're going to make the salad, you're going to make and all of that because we need to have herbs. How to make these things. Go to YouTube and see, look at these vegan videos, how they make these uh, veggies and fruit salads and whatnot. Okay? Read on. Verse 15. Verse 15. She riseth also while it is yet night. Stop right there. And giveth. Hold on. She does what? She riseth also while it is yet night. Meaning what? She wakes early in the morning. She wakes up early while it is yet night. While everybody's sleeping, she's up. I'll give an example of that. Me, when I was still a, when I was still a boy, when I, you know, I was still living in Limpopo and all of that, one thing that I noticed, right, is that it didn't matter whether I was in high school, when I was in primary, especially when I was in high school, because we used to wake up very early to go and study, okay? And what I would notice is that I would wake up very early, you understand? Four o'clock, I'd be up. Guess what? I would be hearing footsteps in the, in the yard. Like, who, who's up at this point? Guess what? My mother. I was like, like, when does she sleep? 
she three o'clock she's already up okay she's already doing things in the house by the time everybody wakes up the food is ready and by the, when everybody goes to sleep she's the last person to go to sleep the whole day she's busy she goes to the bushes to get wood she goes to the well she gets water because we struggle with water in the bushes obviously the the whole job was back, back in the back in the bushes we have big yard she will sweep the whole yard first thing in the morning wake up in the morning there's no footstep the whole yard is swept she listen she does that on it every day my mother she's what she's almost 8 years old now guess what she's still doing that okay she's still doing that but what i'm saying is that's the culture that is is there in the bushes you see they they the problem still want it comes natural to them the problem still want spirit it comes natural another example there's another sister um she's from maputo okay she 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 sells in border she sells there in Lisa, where we teach and she sells she sells peanuts she sells mini meal she sells a whole lot of stuff and that woman right Ah, uh, that woman. Listen, that woman. She works. Ah, uh, that woman. She's a hustler. That's the problem. Thirty one woman. She don't know the scripture, but she's moving according to what is written. And she was pregnant once. Okay, I saw she was pregnant, and she was still carrying that big uh, container, like the big bucket on her head. She'll be moving the whole of border, selling mini meal, selling beans, like the ones the 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 two, the ones that they 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 boil and all of that. She'll be selling them. She'll be doing rounds. The whole of borders, moving to the taxi ranks, going to the malls. Going, listen. The she'll be doing as many rounds as possible. But and the bucket gets empty. She comes round two, round three. She was pregnant doing that. She gave birth. Guess what? She was doing what I saw. Her. She was carrying the the baby on her back with a bucket on top of her head, moving the throughout borders, doing as if like she doesn't have anything in her bag. Guess what? The child grew. Guess what? The child was young, and she will pick. She will put the child there. She will be sitting on a specific point. The child will be just be running around around him, but she will have that the, the bucket there. She will be sending. When we teach on the street, I see that sister all the time. You understand? She just needs a flyer. That sister, man. That sister needs a flyer. Okay, I need to give that sister a flyer. All right, because whenever I see her, we are teaching her busy. So. I don't really have, but I need to give that to that plan. All right. My point is that what we're reading here. That's exactly what I'm saying. Okay. But those spirits are ready to find in Israel. So, sisters, you're gonna learn this day. Okay. Verse 15. One more again. I'm almost done. I think I'm gonna cut it short here. Okay. I'll continue on the next day, Lord. Will. Verse 15 again. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 15. Come on. She riseth also while it is yet night, mm -hmm. and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. That's what you see, because our for our foremothers, they had they had slaves, they had servants. Okay, they had servants that served them. It says she rises also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens, meaning her, her servants. She wakes up early. She means she's in control of what? Of taking care of the path that the Lord gave her. Her role. She understands her role. And she plays her role beautifully with grace. No complaints, no let, no nothing. Why? Because she understands her value. She understands her value. Her value is not being running her mouth. Because today the value, the value that the quote unquote value that has been delusion to the black woman is I must be loud. Nobody must tell me nothing. If you speak, I'm going to be loud. I'm going to curse you out. I'm going to be disrespectful so that nobody speaks to her. Because nobody speaks to her, she thinks, yeah, no, they're afraid of you. No, we look at you like a fool that you are. Because being loud and stubborn, they think that's a power. No, that's a weakness. That makes you look weak. We that we, when we, we, as we understand the scriptures, we see, we say, listen, that right there, that's a liability right there. You understand? That's a lie. That's not an asset. That's a black ashy demon. You stay away from her. And women like that, they are very bitter. So sisters, we don't want any of you for those spirits to jump on you. Just humble down, 
Follow instruction, follow command. We will teach you the right thing. They are going to be uncomfortable, but this is part of the program. Okay? So with that, all praise to the most high God. Let's break bread. We're going to pick it up from Proverbs 31 verse 15 tomorrow, Lord's word. Okay? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most I have for that thing. Thank you.